Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be taking a look at the Robinhood ransomware, only fitting given that I'm actually in Nottingham. This is the thread that was linked to the Baltimore government network attacks and also the resurgence of the Eternal Blue exploit. For those of you that are not aware, Eternal Blue was the NSA based exploit that WannaCry used to pretty much take over the world. <laughs> That's what it felt like. Essentially an SMB vulnerability allowed it to spread without any user intervention. It was actually patched by Windows long ago, but apparently a lot of systems haven't caught up yet, even though it's over a year now. One of the reasons I want to take a look at this sample in particular is because it's a great example of targeted attacks and how ransomware can actually be specifically deployed on systems without researchers being able to access it. I think it will be quite evident what I'm talking about once we start with the demo, so let's do that. As you can see, I have the sample on the desktop if I just run it. It launches command prompt, disappears, it's hard to kind of tell what it's doing. But if I launch it via command prompt, it'll be a bit clearer. So I'll just uh, first go to desktop and then we'll just run robinhood.exe. And as you can see, we get this error saying windows temp pub.key system cannot find the file specified, which is great, right? So the ransomware doesn't even work. Why am I even doing this video? Actually, it works. The thing is pub.key, as the name suggests, is actually the RSA key that the ransomware is going to use to encrypt your data. Now the way RSA works is it is asymmetric encryption, as in the key that you use to encrypt the data cannot be used to decrypt it. There's a public key and a private key. The public key is what you give out to send messages, and the private key is what you need in order to actually decrypt the messages. So in this case, it uses the public key generated via, I'm guessing, some other script run by the attacker. In order to demonstrate this, we can of course create our own RSA key and just place it in this folder and you'll see how that will work out. So let's do that. I'm going to open up a notepad because that's the premium fancy way of doing things, right? Long live Windows XP. Now I do have an RSA key generated over here. I'll just try and copy and paste that. And now we'll save this as pop.key in Windows and temp because that's what it's looking for. So we go in here, say pub.key and save. All right, so this should completely change what happens when I run this file. I know a lot of you will be asking whether or not this file is detected by my AV. Will Kaspersky protect me against this? Will Bitdefender protect me against this? As of now, this ransomware is detected by 53 out of 72 engines in Vars total. So yeah, if you watch TPSC, if you use anything that's remotely decent, you should be good. Now it's worth noting that this ransomware was already on Vars Total and was actually discovered a month before the major attacks hit. All the other misconceptions about signatures aside, I think this is something you need to realize is that with a lot of these major attacks, the threat isn't always new. So using some kind of AV filter, no matter how basic it is, is still very useful. There are a countless number of existing threats that get reused. And if you just don't use a blacklist, you're still vulnerable to all of them. On the bright side, Microsoft was actually fairly quick on this one, so if you have Windows Defender and it's up to date, that would be good as well. But again, as I said, at this point the original sample is over a month old, so unless you don't update your AV or you update it once a year or <laughs> once every three months or you use one of um, one of these, if you just use fprod or if you just use super anti-spyware and nothing else, well, yeah, about time, right? What do you expect? Subscribe to TPSC already. All right, enough of this. Back to the video. And boom, there you go. We're seeing action already. <laughs> Look at that. Look at the mess. I'm sure it's still going, but as you can see, there's already a list of encrypted files on the desktop itself and a lot of ransom notes everywhere. Let's see what happens if we open one of these. There's the ransom message. All your files were encrypted with RSA4096. <laughs> hmm, actually, that's not really compatible with the key I specified, but okay. We encrypted your files with our public key. To decrypt, you need the private key, which is in our hands. See, they explain it very nicely. 
Is it possible to get your data back? Of course not, unless you pay us X amount of Bitcoin. In this case, it is uh, three Bitcoin for each affected system or 13 for all. So you see they have a licensing policy like, you know, regular software vendors. You get it at a discounted price if you want to get it for your entire organization. So only 13 for as many computers as you want. Uh, what have we gotten to? And to make it better, be careful, the cost of your payment increases $10,000 each day after the fourth day. There's the onion address, and uh, there you have it, that's the ransom message. Nothing atypical here. Now the interesting thing of course is, um, how did a lot of these systems get infected, even though this vulnerability was patched ages ago? At the moment it seems that ransomware creators aren't necessarily targeting home computers because it's not particularly profitable. Even if they infect a bunch of systems, first of all it's harder. And this is one of the things people don't talk about as much. Having a diverse multi-layered security strategy is actually very helpful because the attacker can't predict what they're getting into. Whereas if you're just trying to infiltrate one particular target, you can spend days trying to break into it before you actually deliver the ransomware payload. So in case of um, a supply chain attack or infecting a company or a cloud server or an organization, the cyber criminals are going to do their research, they're going to scout it out, they'll figure out how they can get remote code execution on some of those machines. And once they have all of that, then they're going to design the ransomware. I mean, they're obviously these days, they're just using ransomware as a service templates, but they can customize the ransomware to their attack factor so that when it hits, it's brand new and completely takes over. Whereas if they wanted to infect a ton of user computers, they would have to individually compromise all of those computers using some attack factor like an online download. Again, can be blocked, blacklisted, people may not click on it. But when you have one target, it's a lot easier to figure out a path and effectively set up the attack. Lessons to learn, if you run an organization, please make sure that your machines are patched. Sometimes it can take days or months to do it, but it's definitely worth it, especially for your mission critical systems. Believe it or not, there's still millions of dollars being spent every year paying for ransomware, either because people don't back up their systems, don't use proper protection. So don't be that guy. In this case, funnily enough, there was a lot of finger pointing towards NSA and I'm like, Come on, Eternal Blue was a year ago. Were you guys asleep until now? And the result of these attacks is a lot of services go down. So even though as a home user you're not directly affected, you're indirectly affected. In this case you can pay your bills, you can log into your local services, and that can be much more damaging than just an individual ransomware attack. Not just to the organization, but to end users as well. So once again, highly recommend patching your systems using decent protection. If you don't know what that is, like and share this video, subscribe to TPSC. That's what this channel is all about. This is Leo. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.